Hey folks, John here from Short Mountain Distillery, getting ready to get our 2012 spring corn planting in the ground. We're uh, getting ready to do our 2012 spring corn planting. Real excited about being able to get that done today. The uh, weather hasn't cooperated with us a whole lot this year. It's been a pretty dry spring, but luckily here in the last week or two, we've gotten enough rain to where the soil is good and moist ready to go. So we've got the ground fluffed up. We're getting ready to get out there and pitch up that two-row planter and get the last 10 acres or so of what we need done planted today. We, uh, we're we really excited about having a, uh, a super open pollinated variety this year that we're going to put in the ground. It's called Trucker's Pride. It's kind of hard to find, but luckily Jimmy Simpson was able to find some of that for us and he's brought us some to get in the ground over here. He says it's about as good as it gets when it comes to growing corn from making good shine with. So. We're going to get that stuck in the ground and uh, also excited this year we're finishing up our USDA certification to become the first organic farm in Cannon County. So we're doing our best to keep up with all the, uh, the bookkeeping and the record keeping and all that sort of thing that kind of goes along with that. We're, uh, we're going to spray our compost tea on the ground once we get the stuff planted in there this year. All our soil tests have come back good. So uh, come on out and join us in the field and let's get this done. The Middle Tennessee Mule Skinners came in and helped us disc this field and get it ready to go. We always love having those guys come out. They do a super job and it's a lot of fun to watch the mules. Kind of keeps in touch with what we're trying to do here on the farm, which is not only preserving the tradition of the moonshining, but also some of the older farming practices that we feel are important to keep up with. Also using a two-row planter out here in the field today. These are getting few and far between. Not many people want to use these small planters anymore. Most of them are using the big planters in the combine. So I can tell you that this two-row planter is just shy of pulling a, uh, having a mule pull it across the field. So the trucker's pride is uh, what's been used for a long, long time around these parts. The old moonshiners will tell you that it is ideal for what they do. And you know, there's a variety of reasons that go into it. The biggest is that it will continue to make alcohol longer than most other varieties of open pollinated and especially of the hybrid corns. The moonshiners tell me those will run off one time, you make one good batch with them, but then it's pretty well done. The trucker's pride and the open pollinated varieties really allow you to do more more runs per batch so you don't use as much corn and it also seems to be a, a better flavor it's got more of that you know just a light corn flavor to the moonshine itself sustainable methods that we utilize here on the farm being so important to us just you know for, for all the reasons like protecting and, and preserving the history and the traditions and the heritage that farming life was a big part of this from the very beginning so that's something that we feel like it's our duty and our obligation to keep up with. Of course, open pollinated's other advantage is that you can save seed from it. A hybrid corn is, is only going to make you one patch of corn. If you save the seeds from it and plant it, you'll get a little stalk, but it's not going to make any corn or do anything else. But these open pollinated 
varieties are essentially like the heirloom tomatoes. They're the type of things that you can save the seed back and replant it each year. What we're real interested in doing is trying to develop our own type of open pollinated corn. We've got another type of open pollinated that's been planted by a neighbor of ours down the road. We're going to save the seed from that and then hopefully be able to cross these two types next year. There aren't any open pollinated certified organic corn varieties available in, for, for this region. So what we're trying to do is take two non-organic, open pollinated, you know, old versions of these types of corn that are real rare, combine them, get the strengths from both, and be able to have our very own open pollinated corn that is suited for this area. Now what we use is a method of collecting those seeds where we're going to take the ears at the end of the year that are the biggest we're going to take from stalks that a lot of times they'll produce let's say two ears per, per plant but we're going to find the ones that have got the most ears per plant and take the biggest ones from those. That'll be the seed we save. We want to keep the strongest of the strong going forward. Uh, this is a two-row planter. It's a Massey Ferguson. It's hard to say exactly how old it is, but this one looks like it's about from, uh, I'd say, the mid-70s, which was kind of the heyday of the two-row planters. Again, now everybody's using the big planters. They're planting 20 rows at a time and that sort of thing, so it's hard to find parts for these, and it's really hard to find planters like these anymore. But basically what it does is it works on the wheel's motion, that every few feet you can set it to where it'll drop a kernel of corn. It's digging you out a little a little ditch in there, so to speak, with the tires, the wheels, and then it'll drop the corn down in there every few feet. And then the second wheel that runs over the top of it that mashes the corn down into the ground and packs it down. So that, and we got great germination off of it last year, so we're we're tickled. You'll have roasting ears on the stalks. Those are field corn that haven't hardened yet and haven't started drying out. So the old guys, old farmers and stuff would bring those in occasionally and their wives would put them in the stove and roast them or put them over a fire and roast them so you can't eat those. But we, we want to wait until the plant dries out completely and the corn dries out completely. It'll be brown back there by the time we're ready to go. A good measuring stick for it or, or just a, a good way to look at it is to wait until after you've had one good frost. Once you do that, then you really remove the danger of there being moisture in that corn. What you don't want to do is harvest it while it's got any moisture content whatsoever because you're going to get mold and you're going to have problems from there. We get, this, uh, we get this in the ground today. We're looking at probably, depending on weather, now if we get some good showers, it'll, it'll speed the process up, but should be within 10 days or so, 10 days to 14 days, we should be able to see some sprouts coming up out of there, some little shoots. It's gonna um, 
Typically, it's got about a four-month growing season that it, that it will need to be able to get fully up and tasseled. You let it get good and dry, then you let that frost hit it and it's ready to go. I think last year it was November before we finally got everything harvested. But that's okay, it's not gonna go bad out there in the field. If anything, it'll actually help its storage ability. So we're, uh, we're really excited about it. That's where they make all that good shine.